Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this animation of this puzzle building itself. This is actually very easy and I'll be showing you some tricks along the way, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we will do is delete the default cube, so press X and delete it. Next up, we could go ahead and model the puzzle piece ourselves, but that would just take way too long. So instead, we're going to be using this script that this guy created, which automatically generates a puzzle which we can download as an SVG. So go ahead, click the link in the description and go to this page. Once you're here, you can either decide to build a hexagon circle puzzle or a rectangle one. I'm going to be creating a rectangle one, so go ahead and select this, and it'll bring you over to this page. Here we have a couple of different settings. The seed value is up top, and this will just give you a random variation. The tab size is the little pieces on the end of the puzzle. You can control the size of it. I'm going to be setting this to 20%. The jitter amount controls the randomness of the puzzle, so if I drag this up, you can see they're a lot more crazy and uh, curvy. I'm going to be setting this down to 1%, so they're pretty straight. And then here we have the corner radius, so you can control how round the corners are, the tiles, the number of pieces going across and up and down. I'm gonna leave it at 15, but I'm gonna set the Y to 11, so we have one more in the middle. And then finally, you can control the size. So if you want a square one, we can set this to 200, but you're gonna to want to set the tiles to 11, just like that, so we have a square piece. I'm gonna be leaving it at 15 and 300 for the size. And once you're happy with your puzzle, go ahead and click on Download SVG. Now jumping back over to Blender, let's go ahead and import that file that we just created. If we go over to File, down to Import, and then click on SVG, which is a vector format, I'm going to click on this and then navigate to that folder. Once you have found it, go ahead and select the Jigsaw.SVG and import into Blender. We should see it down here, but it's currently really small, so let's go ahead and box select the entire thing and scale it up probably around this size. Now, when you import an SVG, they are converted into curves. As you can see here, we have all the curve settings. So let's go ahead and select them all and press Control J to join them into one object. Then over in the collections, I'm just going to drag it into the original collection and delete the one that was created. Next up, I'm going to select it, right click, click on Set Origin and Origin to Geometry. Then I'm gonna press Alt G to snap it to the center of the world. From there, let's go ahead and add in a plane. We'll scale it up to be a little bit bigger than the jigsaw puzzle. Now let's select our curve once again, and what we're gonna want to do is change the resolution. Because if we zoom in here, you can see there is a lot of geometry, and we're gonna be using a knife project on the plane to cut out the pieces. With this set to 12, it's gonna be a lot of geometry, and it's gonna be a little bit too much. So I'm gonna set the resolution of the curve a little bit lower. You can probably get away with a resolution of 7, but I'm going to go with 8 just so we have a little bit more smooth pieces. Once we have done that, we can go ahead and Shift D it, move it to its own layer just in case we want to go back to it, and then I'm going to just hide that. Go ahead and select the curve once again, and we're going to convert it to a mesh. To do this, go ahead and right click, select Convert To, and select the mesh. Now if we go into edit mode, we can see we have a lot of geometry. The next step is to hold shift and select the plane, then go into edit mode. If we press A to select everything and press F3, we can type in the word knife and you should see the knife project. What this will do is it'll take the objects that are selected and then cut them out into the plane. So if we click on knife project, it might take a couple seconds for it to generate. But once we do that, we can see it has worked correctly. We have all of the pieces on the plane. So now we can go out of edit mode, select the curve, and go ahead and delete that. We're not going to need it anymore. Then we will select the plane once again and go back into edit mode, and we're going to delete the outside edge. I'm going to go into vertices select mode and select all of the corners, then press X and delete the vertices. Now that we have all of the pieces in place, let's inset them. So I'm going to press A to select everything, and I'm going to zoom in here. And then I'm going to double tap I. This will inset each individual face. You only want to go a little bit because if you go too far, you're going to get these weird artifacts. So only go right about there. Just go in a little bit and then left click. Next, before you do anything else, press Control or Command I to invert your selection and then delete all of those vertices. Now what we have is individual pieces that we can select and move anywhere we want. 
I'm gonna press A to select everything and go P and then click on buy loose parts. Now we have individual objects that we can select and manipulate how we want. I'm gonna select everything and then right click and click on set origin and origin to geometry so now every single piece has the origin in the middle of it. Before we get onto the animation of our puzzle pieces building itself, let's create the material. I'm gonna go over to the material tab and create a new one. From there we can split this view and then open up the shader editor. I'm gonna press N to close off that panel and add in a new texture. So I'm gonna press Shift A and add in an image texture. We'll plug the color into the base color. Then I'm gonna click open and navigate to a texture. I'm gonna be using this one right here and open image. From there, you can go ahead and play around with the principled shader if you want to. I'm probably just gonna go with a roughness of like 0.8 to metallic of 0.2. Then if we press Z and go into rendered view, we should be able to see it right here, but it's not applied to any of the other puzzle pieces. So to fix that, I'm gonna press Control L and click on link materials. And once we've done that, we can see it's located on the puzzle pieces. If we come to this menu and go over to the UV image editor, we can play around with the UV map. So I'm gonna go into edit mode, select everything, come over here on this window, select everything as well, and then scale it along the X so it's actually proportionate. If for some reason you have a weird UV map, what you can do is press U and click on project from view, and this will automatically generate the correct bounding box as you can see, then you can scale it up and place it in the middle of your texture. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and give it some thickness. I'm gonna go into edit mode and extrude it downwards just slightly like this. And I'm also going to add in a bevel modifier. Doing this gives it a lot more detail and it looks a lot better in the final animation. So just with one of them selected, let's go over to the modifier tab, click add modifier and select bevel. I'm gonna press control A and apply the scale to it so it actually applies the bevel correctly. Then let's turn the segments up to a value of three. To apply this to everything else, we're going to do the exact same thing. Press Ctrl L and click on Copy Modifiers. And there we go. Now every single one of these has that bevel modifier. Now let's create the animation of the puzzle pieces building themselves. To do this, it's actually very simple. We're going to select all of them, press I and add in a location rotation keyframe on frame 1. Then we're going to select that keyframe and just move it over to frame 40. Then on frame one, we're going to drag all of them upwards, just right about there or so, depending on how high you want the puzzle pieces to fall from, probably around there. And then I'm gonna hit I and add in another location rotation keyframe. Next up, I'm going to select a bunch of random pieces, just like this, and we're gonna rotate them randomly so they have a little bit of rotation. So over in the proportional editing, I'm gonna turn this on and set the fall off over to random. Now, if we double tap R, we should get a random rotation, but you can see it's rotating everything like this. That's not gonna really work, so let's switch this over to individual origins. Now, if we double tap R, we can see that we're getting this effect. So go ahead, do this a couple times, select a bunch of random ones, double tap R, select one, and just kind of do this sort of effect, just like that. And once you're happy with it, select everything, go I and click on location rotation. Now what happens is if we play our animation, you can see they all go into that position on the bottom, which is pretty cool. But one problem that we have is that they're all moving at the exact same time. This doesn't really look good for the animation and I want only one of them to be moving at a time. To do this, we're gonna be using an add-on called Commotion. This will offset every single one of the keyframes for us automatically and it's very customizable and very, very good. So go ahead, click the link in the description and download the version 2.21 and then make sure you have the latest version of Blender installed, 2.9 or above. To actually install the add-on, you can go over to Edit, down to your Preferences, underneath the add-ons, click Install, and then navigate to that blend file and then import that in. Once you have it, go ahead and type in Commotion and you should see the animation Commotion. Click that box on the side to enable it and you're good to go. So how this works is if we press the N key, we can go underneath the Commotion tab and here we have a lot of uh, settings over here that we can change. Let's just go ahead and test this out by clicking Offset Animation, and what this will do is it will take every single one of the objects that we have selected and then offset the animation by the number that we have put in right here. So since it's set to one, it's gonna offset by one frame for every single object. Now what happens is if we play our animation, we can see we get this effect. 
And there you go, with just a simple click, it offsets everything completely. With normal Blender, you can't do this, and I don't know why it's not in Blender automatically. This is such a useful thing. Anyways, over in the commotion add-on, we can see here we have a sort by. Currently, it's set to the cursor. So what this will do is it will sort the offset by the cursor. If I move the cursor over to the right side, I'll restart the animation and then click offset animation. What it will do is it'll actually start over on this side now, as you can see. So wherever you place your cursor and the, if the mode is set over to cursor, it'll start at that point. One thing to note is with the offset animation button, wherever your cursor is on the timeline, that is where it will be placed. For example, if I have it on frame 71 and I click offset animation, it's going to move it over to this spot. So make sure you restart the timeline and then click offset before you do anything else. The other sort by that we have here is the name. What this will do is it will take the name of every single object and then offset it by that way. For example, you can see here we have plane one, which is located in the bottom left. Plane 001 is located here, plane two, and it'll just go down the line. So with it set by name, and then we click offset animation, and then we play it, we can see this is the effect that we're getting. It's going by the name of the objects and then offsetting them that way. We also have random, which will randomly select the object and offset it that way. So if we restart our animation and click offset, it'll take random pieces and then bring them down. Finally, if you want a little bit more control, you can click on multi offset. This will allow you to use objects in a collection to offset it. To test this out, I'm going to go ahead and collapse this, right click and create a new collection. We'll go to collection at three and then I'll press shift C to snap my cursor. I'm going to press shift A and add in an empty object. I'll just place it over here and I'm going to turn off proportional editing. I'll press shift D and move it over to this spot. And then to add in a couple of keyframes, I'm going to go to frame one, select them both, I, location, rotation. We'll skip to frame 50, move this down, move this one up, and then select them both, hit I, and add in another keyframe. So now if we go back over to our first collection, we'll select all of the pieces once again. We're going to animate the collection one, which is, has all the pieces in it. Then for the effector, it's going to be collection three, the one that we just created. We'll restart the timeline and click on offset animation. Now what happens is it's going to use those empties that we just created. You can see the bottom right and the top left. It's going to offset them that way. Up on the top, we have two different values here, the offset and the threshold. The offset is how many frames it will offset per object. For example, if I bring this up to a value of two, instead of every single frame, it's going to offset every single object by two frames. So if I click on this, it's going to double the amount of frames that we have and it's going to look something like this. The threshold amount controls how many objects are going to be offset. So if I bring this up to a value of five, there's going to be five objects moving at the same time. Then it's going to take another five, move those at the same time and offset them that way. So if I set this down to one and then I'll click animate offset, we have a lot of objects moving at the same time, as you can see. For this animation, I'm going to select the cursor and I'm going to leave the cursor at the center of the world. Then we'll restart the animation and click offset. As you can see, this is looking really, really cool. One final thing that I'll do in this tutorial is I'll take the middle piece and then move that to the end of the animation. So that one is actually the last one that gets placed to do this, select the middle piece and grab those keyframes and then move them all the way to the end of the animation frame 205. Now what happens is if we restart and then we play this, you can see the middle piece is there. Once it's completed, the last piece is that middle and it looks a lot more satisfying. Another really cool feature that you can do with this animation is you can change the interpolation mode of these keyframes. You can do this very easily by box selecting every single one of them and pressing T and then selecting the one that you want. For example, the bounce interpolation has a really cool effect. If we select that one, I'll restart our animation and play it. We can see this is the effect that we're getting. The pieces are bouncing as they land on the ground. The constant one will give a cool effect as well. It's almost like a time lapse of the pieces being built. The one that we'll be using in this tutorial is the Bezier interpolation because I think it looks really nice with the smooth transitions. And then finally, the last step is just to create a scene around this. You can add some lighting, add in a plane with a texture, and then render this out into an animation. But there you go. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you learned something new or created your own animation, make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. If you're new here, consider clicking that subscribe button because I create Blender tutorials all the time. 
Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.